This pig sacrifice is probably one of the last the indigenous Banong community will ever make on their traditional land here on a tributary of the Mekong River. Rising waters swelling behind the gates of a 400 megawatt hydropower dam will soon swallow Cabal Ramias and its ancestral spirits for good. The government has ordered residents to relocate, and while many have accepted the ultimatum, at least 50 families here have decided to stay and defend their sacred land. <laughs> He didn't respond. We still keep to, to fight, demand them to respond to what they violate and destroy our, our land, our life, our property, everything. Loran is an ardent defender of his people's fast vanishing identity, which is being crushed as mainstream society encroaches further and further into their lands. For these activists, relocation equals the death knell for the Benong's unique way of living off the land. They're urging their Benong brothers and sisters to resist at all costs. On the other side of the argument is almost 1.8 million cubic metres of water amassing behind Cambodia's biggest dam. The more than $800 million project is supposed to supply power to five provinces and is backed by firms from China and Vietnam, as well as one of Cambodia's richest tycoons. Cambodia's thirst for electric power is surging, with demand expected to triple between 2012 and 2020. The country currently imports much of its power needs. But the cost these gates will inflict on the Mekong's fish stocks the primary source of protein to as many as 80% of Cambodians are predicted to be devastating. Combine this with the displacement of an estimated 4,000 families from a 335 square kilometre inundation zone, and it's easy to see why activists, villagers and conservation groups are asking development for whom. <laughs> All of this has made the project a sensitive topic, as has the mobilisation of this community, who are openly defiant and overwhelm security forces blocking access to the village. It's about a two hour, extremely bumpy ride through jungle to reach the village from the main road. Out here, the arms of government barely reach, and the indigenous minority villagers pride themselves on their self-sufficiency. Their houses are simple and modest, but they stand on land that for the Benong is alive with the spirits of their buried ancestors. The Benong live off the land, avoiding the use of money where they can. Their remote lifestyle is tough and offers little in the way of security. Nevertheless, Srang Lang says she will never leave the land her grandfather was given by the late King Norodom Sihanouk in exchange for a pair of elephant tusks. We deeply regret that they have asked us to abandon our birthplace. We will not abandon here. We will struggle to live in my birthplace. Even if they build a good house or compensate us, we will not accept it at all. The houses at this relocation site do look better than those offered in many other Cambodian land disputes. Thousands of people from villages in the inundation zone have taken the compensation offer, leaving communities divided. Sar Pon's brother has refused to leave, but Pon believes life in the new village is better. You cock me out of that. It's different because it has a highway, an ASEAN highway. Before I could not transport any goods, now I can. The truck can get into our home to transport goods. Whatever I need, they can reach my home. Because Pon was forced by declining fish stocks to stop working as a fisherman, he's happy to be integrated into the formal economy. But there are plenty of others here who are much less satisfied with a deal they feel forces them into subsistence dependency. 
And like everywhere we go, company and government officials are present to make sure the discontent keep quiet. The serious environmental impacts and large-scale displacement resulting from the dam could be argued to be necessary costs for supplying desperately needed power into the Cambodian grid while bringing economic opportunities to impoverished communities. But as is increasingly the case in Cambodia, that's a debate the government simply does not want the public to have. David Boyle for VOA News in Stung Trang Province, Cambodia.